Hello, hope you're doing well, and Happy New Year! Welcome to this installment of Sketchbook Sessions. For anybody who didn't see my last one of these from a while ago, this is basically a few and far between video series that's a bit more loose format and casual than my usual art videos. Just to kinda pick up my tablet pen and ramble for a bit about whatever's on my mind kinda deal. So what is on my mind today? Well, with it being the new year, it means it's time for fresh starts and New Year's resolutions and all that. I have plenty of creative goals for 2020, like trying to be kinder on myself with my work schedule, and trying to cut loose a bit more when I'm drawing so that I can have a bit more fun without worrying about being precise, and trying to get more to grips with animation. But in terms of personal goals, my main one is just being able to embrace my homosexual tendencies more than ever before. To put it simply, going into 2020, I'm just in a big gay mood. Though if you read the title of this video, or indeed if you know anything about me, then I'm sure that'll come as no surprise. But uh, something that has sort of fueled that mood in me in particular, or at least really contributed to it, is the fact that I very recently had top surgery. I've already talked about it a bunch on here, so don't worry, I won't bore you by repeating myself, but obviously it's been a real big turning point for me. And weirdly, it's kind of flipped an unexpected switch for me in terms of being able to fully feel comfortable in my sexuality. I'm not sure if I'll be able to explain that properly, because obviously I was hardly shy about the fact that I was gay before now, but like, before getting top surgery, I wasn't able to really give my identity as a gay man the level of attention it needed to really... flourish? I guess? Right? Yeah, that's the word I'll go with, because obviously I still had issues and hurdles that I was facing as a trans man that I needed to get past before I could feel like, you know, the fully realised final version of myself that would then be capable of going out and living the gay life. Before I could really feel comfortable as a gay man, I had to be able to feel like more than just a trans man, almost. It's kind of a, a, a tricky one to, to phrase, but hopefully this is making sense. Like, I'm always going to be trans, obviously, and I'm always going to be very proud of that, but I think it's fair to say that every trans guy wants to reach the point where they just feel like a man, and they're just seen as one, rather than constantly feeling conscious of the fact that we're trans. Basically, until recently, I didn't feel like I had finished becoming a person yet, if that makes any sense, let alone a person with the capacity to fully embrace their orientation. Uh, so for me, it never felt good even thinking of taking up any romantic pursuits, because I just didn't know if people were going to see me the way I wanted them to. Whole lot of insecurity getting in the way of me living my best gay life, basically. <laughs> but now, I'm fortunate enough to have gotten to a point where I do feel comfortable in my own skin, and unfucking shakeable in my own sense of self. Like, I could fight God if I wanted to, to be honest. But hey, blasphemy aside, um, during my recovery period, I basically had a lot of time to sit around and kind of reflect on that whole train of thought, and I ended up going on 8-tracks and Spotify and stuff like that, and looking up just a bunch of playlists and songs of either, you know, gay anthems old and new, or like cheesy love songs that have been covered by guys to make them gay. I was feeling real sappy basically, and I ended up discovering a whole host of really nice tunes both by artists I already knew and by people I'd never heard of. And sitting around listening to this collection of gay songs made by gay people for gay people, all while feeling 100% secure in my sense of self for probably the first time in my life, uh, like I said before, it just put me in a mood. <laughs> More specifically though, it just really put to mind how nice it is to just be able to exist. You know what I mean? Like, especially in terms of all of these gay thoughts, it's like, you know how it is, so many homophobic people always say stuff like, Oh, you're trying to turn everybody else gay, that's, that's, that's how you spend your time. Or like, uh, stop shoving your gayness down our throats, we don't need to see it in public. And like, all that nonsense. I don't know why I, I went American there, can't imagine. Um, <laughs> But like, at the end of the day, whether you're gay or trans or anything else, like, we all just want to be able to exist, right? Without having to worry about what anybody else thinks. Like, we don't want anything more than that, we don't want to turn anybody else gay, we've got plenty of, of sound people as it is, we're cool. Um, <laughs> but yeah, like, I mean, the main goal is just you want to be able to exist without feeling overly conscious of how we're perceived. And I think that once you're able to do that and feel safe being yourself and being around other people who see you for who you are, I don't know, I think that's a really beautiful thing. So yeah, as with any strong emotion I experience, I ended up really wanting to draw something that put across that kind of vibe of just being gay and existing. Nothing ostentatious or anything like some of the more loud and proud art I've made specifically for Pride events in the past. Just something that's like, yeah, this is the year of being gay and feeling okay. <laughs> And I had those playlists I found during recovery on an absolute loop while I was drawing this as well. 
Like, if you haven't heard some of these artists before, then I'd obviously really recommend them, but I had, like, Todrick Hall's new album and a bunch of Superfruit tracks playing on the more high-energy side of things. Oh, and Dorian Electra as well. If you haven't heard some of their stuff before, then just, like, watch the music video for Flamboyant and then just go on a journey of discovery from there, to be honest. There are also a bunch of softer songs that I've just, like, fallen in love with recently as well. There's this artist called Matt Alba, who has a song called Handsome Man, which is just the sweetest thing I've ever heard. And he did a really nice cover of I Wanna Dance With Somebody as well that just like fully hits me in the heart because I love that song. I've also been listening to Thomas Sanders' new song as well called Recipe For Me. And oh my god, if you haven't seen the music video for that, then again, go watch it. And if you are an emotional fucking sap like I am, or indeed anybody who's ever struggled with like figuring themselves out, it's probably gonna make you cry. Uh, so enjoy that. <laughs> But yeah, this drawing session was definitely one that was heavily inspired by all of those tunes, uh, but like, that, that's not an exclusive thing, like I have to listen to something whenever I draw generally, or I just can't focus. That might be the ADHD talking, but I fully can't understand when people are able to do creative work without listening to music, or at least having a podcast on or something, because how do you not get distracted, or bored, or just lose your mind, honestly? Anyway, uh, looking at it now, it's probably also worth mentioning that the guys I ended up drawing in this picture are not based on anybody in particular, they're not characters from anything, uh, before anybody goes pasting their ships in the comments, because I know you guys like to do that. <laughs> Although, halfway through this drawing, uh, the guy on the left did kind of turn into the gay witch I drew in my last Halloween video, the Ride with Pride one, where I drew a bunch of different witches for the different pride flags. Uh, so, I don't know, maybe these two are, like, magical frat bros or something, or maybe not magical, maybe they're just frat bros, who knows? Either way, it's pretty cute. <laughs> On the technical side of things, I've recently switched from using regular Paint Tool Sci for my digital artwork to Paint Tool Sci version 2, which is really fun. Uh, it also gave me the chance to actually organize my mess of a swatches palette when I imported it from the old version, and honestly, that has been life-changing. But yeah, it's been fun to explore the new version of Psy a little bit, because it has a lot more handy features than the old version did, like text and gradients, and my personal favourite, Gaussian Blur, an effect that I was very happy to be able to apply in-program to give some depth and focus to this piece. Something I didn't realise until after I'd finished drawing though was that for some reason, Paint Tool Psy 2 records at a different scale in my screen cap software than the old version did, so I'm gonna need to take a look at that and figure out what's going on before I next try to record. <laughs> When I started colouring this one, I wanted to make it look like a nightclub kind of setting. The backdrop for it was actually inspired by some of the decor at the most popular gay club in my city, where a whole section of one wall is just like a big screen that lights up along with the music, kind of like one of those old-fashioned Windows music player screensavers. So yeah, the whole aesthetic I had in mind here was like low light with a bunch of neon highlights that would really stand out. I got up a bunch of reference pictures on Google because I don't care what you say, you should always use references when you're working on something you're not used to. Um, but as I got on with actually painting it, it ended up a lot brighter than I'd intended because every time I tried to apply an overlay or a mask to make it look like a darker room, it just really oversaturated the colours. Normally that's the kind of thing I would spend ages fussing over and trying to correct or repaint, but like I said at the start, this was just a casual, no stress kind of piece, just trying to get back into the swing of things. So instead, I was just like, okay, I guess it's bright now, I can work with this. <laughs> But uh, it's quite nice being able to just adapt like that with these more casual artworks. I still have some trouble sometimes with my more uh, like dedicated project work and my professional pieces, where I feel like every single line I draw needs to be super precise and perfect, but I'm working on kind of letting go of that mentality a bit. It really helps to do some inconsequential pieces like this every now and then, because it really helps you realise that like your art can still look fine, and sometimes even better when you just stop being so precious about it. Gives it a bit more life, more energy, you know? It also saves so much time not redrawing every line 50 times because it doesn't line up perfectly with where you were trying to put it. Honestly, unless your art style is fully reliant on having a very sharp line work style, like unless that's your trademark, I'd recommend just cutting loose and letting go a bit. It's okay for things to be a little bit sketchy as long as you still work with confidence, like try not to be scared of doing strong brush strokes and stuff, but also don't be scared of making a mess. Just have some faith in yourself basically because it'll pan out okay in the end. Anyway, since the lighting took a turn on the brighter side, the whole scene here kind of ended up looking like, uh, if any of you have been to a nightclub yourself, you might know what I'm talking about here, but almost like a photo or a moment caught between the flash of the strobe lights, like when everything turns super bright for a split second while the beat drops. Hopefully that makes sense, but yeah, it's nice anyway, like a moment of calm in a very lively place. Also, I had a blast trying out some of the different brushes in Psy 2 to give the painting a bit of texture. There was one called 
glitter, I think, which was perfect for the wall of lights in the background. And then there was some kind of streaky one that worked really well for putting in some lens flare effects. It was real nice to dip back into a looser, painty style like this again as well. I think it was just the thing I needed after being away from my workspace for so long. Like, just pick up my tablet pen and have a go at drawing something. Kind of re-familiarize myself with coloring, and try to make use of some bits of anatomy advice I stumbled across while I wasn't able to work. Though that was mostly useful when I was drawing the arms. I don't normally go for the three ovals technique, but once you get a handle on which direction the biceps flex in, it's actually pretty handy. More than anything though, I'm just really glad to be getting back into the swing of things with drawing again. And I'm real happy that my first drawing of 2020 was this one. <laughs> it's got good energy, you know? Anyway, uh, I think that's probably about it for this video. Uh, thank you very much for joining me for this little bit of uh, introspection and music recommendation. Uh, <laughs> I hope it was at least a little bit enlightening or helpful or at least mildly entertaining. Uh, even though it started out pretty aimless, I do actually really like how this piece turned out. Uh, again, I think it really sets the tone for the kind of vibes we're going for in 2020. So I am going to be putting it up as prints, stickers, and all the usual stuff over on my Redbubble page, so links for that are going to be in the description if you want to get a copy of it for yourself and help motivate your own gay endeavours in the year to come. Anyway, for now, thank you very much for tuning in. I hope the year ahead treats you very kindly, and I hope to see you next time.